Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Good to see everyone. Thank you for joining Elizabeth and Jeff Baudre, the owners of Tipples Brews and Wines in Gainesville, Florida, for this week's Wine of the Week virtual tasting. Let's have some fun. All right. This I'm really excited about the wine this week. Uh, so this week we're going to be drinking the Plémont Monastère de saint mont Tenat from Madiron, France. It's a mouthful. Plémont being the winemaking group in this case. Oh, uh, okay. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Monastère de saint mont is the specific area within Madiron, France, which is in southwestern France. Okay. Uh, this is a Tanat. I love Tanat. I know. It's I'm super excited about tasting where it all came from. There's not much Tanat grown in France anymore, though it is the origin. Um, but we were able to get some. This was the only bottle, one of only two options I had in the entire state of Florida. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that COVID, the options are kind of pared down a little right. bit. A fantastic, this is the one I would have chosen. It wasn't just that it was there. Great ratings on here. And I think we're going to really enjoy this wine. Um, so I think we're lucky to get it. But I bought everything that was left in the state of Florida. So now you guys have it. No one else has it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a few bottles left so at the you, store. That is it. You put it on social media and go, no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, should have been part of things. Just exactly. saying. Exactly. There you go. If you have not already done so, let's time. It is time to pour a glass or two, depending or four, depending how many of you are in the room. Three for John and Laura. So uh, I gave it a light chill, about thirty minutes in my refrigerator. Oh, that's pretty. Thank you. You are welcome. So I know I say it's not like it's an obvious thing. I'm getting lots of splash in here. This guy's going to need a minute to open up. And we will definitely see an evolution tonight. Give it a good swirl. Let it take a breath. So you didn't decant this one, though? I didn't. OK. Uh, only did you because just forget, or did you? No, OK. It's not that. <laughs> it, and it's a good question. I was considering decanting it. Mm -hmm. But this is, I think, is this the first time? I've never had this wine. OK, that's All right. right. So I, it's, it's one of those where there's not enough of it. Like right. there, there are some wines where you talk to the reps and say, hey, look, I'd like to know more about this wine. And they say, great, read about it and choose to buy it or not. There's not enough bottles to sample it. And this is one of those wines. So um, so we're going off the ratings. Here. We're going off the ratings, mm -hmm. off the reputation of the region, off the fact that this was what I really wanted to try. I've yeah. always wanted to drink one. Mm -hmm. And I thought you guys would enjoy the ride with me. So good, bad, or sideways, let's figure out what we think about this guy um, So tonight. you didn't decant it because... I did not decant it because I want to enjoy the evolution completely. Okay. I want to see what it gives me right out of the bottle all the way through. We'll be here 40, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's see where it goes. Okay. It should be enough to get us there in the end during that time. Um, all right. Let's, while we're getting our initial impressions, let's pull up the first screen. We'll talk about food pairings. Okay. And then we'll jump back to talking about what we're what we're sensing. Okay, so here we are, uh, wine ratings. Wine enthusiasts gave this guy a 92. No slouch there. And mm -hmm. wine enthusiasts doesn't just throw ratings around. So I feel, I feel really good about their ratings. Um, really, there are not many that do. Um, food pairings in this guy. I thought I'd get a little, you know, go out there a little bit. Cassoulet, which is kind of a, you it's know. It's fun to say. It is fun to say, mm -hmm. right? It's a, a bean heavy kind of um, dish with okay. uh, sausages. Uh, roast lamb, Roquefort cheese, which would have been even more fun had Linda been here. Right. But, uh, and sausage in general. So, um, as well as any beef pairing you want to put, anything like that. So, all right, let's jump back and we'll talk about what we're sensing and what we're smelling, what we're tasting. Hmm. Let's see here. So, this guy is. All right, they don't give me percentages on this. It's not 100% to not, but it is vastly mostly to not, right? It has a little bit of Cabernet Franc mm -hmm. blended in to help to ease the tightness and the grippiness of the to not okay. because it's such a big grape. The minimum percentage, it could be a 60%. I believe this one is significantly higher than that. Okay. Uh, alcohol content, 14.5%. Mmm. It smells nice already. It does. Kind of a chocolate covered cherry 
and almost a smoky earthiness too. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Really let it roll around your palate for a minute. That's a grippy tannic, um, big, big red wine, mm -hmm. which is what you would expect from Tanat. Uh, from that is what they are. Mm. Um, yeah, I can even feel it like, I feel like, uh, like I feel it in my throat as it's going right. down too, like the grippiness <laughs> right. Yeah. right now. Yeah, the, the, not uh, just like on my tongue. The French Tanat is mm -hmm. known to be even grippier okay. than the Uruguayan Tanat, right, which was the other one we had. I, was gonna say, uh, I know not everyone's here, Europe right? And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, going into the description of the grape later on. Mm -hmm. But in the world, there's Uruguayan Tanat is really the dominant place to get Tanat in the world now. Mm -hmm. The French Tanat is really small production and it's very hard to get a hold of. But it's always been known for being big and grippy. And I mean, for sure, this is put any any cut of beef you want with this guy oh right? absolutely so why what makes it that mm. it's grippier same grape so weather conditions venting why is it combination of what's going on with the weather mm -hmm. so to thicken the skin of the grape mm -hmm. and how much oak and how much time it spends on oak to get it to mellow and relax okay so which we can get into as well um Age worthy, is this wine age worthy? The answer is a big yes. We're drinking in 2016, this wine, all right, so we have what, five years in on this guy? Sure. This guy's got another 10 years plus easily. Um, why, all right, combination, big tannins help age worthiness. Fresh acidity, this does not taste like dried fruit. It tastes like, you know, they're big, rich fruits, but yeah. there is a freshness to the wine. And then the alcohol content being 14 and a half is not big or excessive, mm -hmm. but it's certainly big enough. As far as that, what's your, like, what would be the cutoff for a wine? Like as far as alcohol content, if you were like, ah, anything below this, you're certainly not aging. It's not, it's not only, it, it, because it's always a play of yeah, conditions. Yeah, I know it's different things. So but would there be anyone that you were like, oh, it's 12%, but because of these other things, it's fine to age? Yes, a uh, Riesling. Oh, okay. All right, so Riesling can be 8%. Really? But because of all the acidity, it can age. Okay. Yes. Right. So it is It is a play on those things. Mm -hmm. Tannins, if you've got a white, you're not going to have any tannins, right. right? But with reds, tannins, mm -hmm. um, if it lacks tannins, you're going to need some alcohol and some acidity to help it to thrive and you know and change positively over time there is there's a tiny little a flying something flying something anyway <laughs> don't worry it will end up in my glass <laughs> as long as it's not a All spider right. he'll be fine that's right <laughs> so let's cover through uh kind of some uh, our list of tasting and um and um and scent notes all right so we'll go to the dryness level this is a dry wine, no doubt on that, right? Completely, this is a dry wine. Acidity, I would call it a medium acidic wine. Mm -hmm. It's a nice balance to it. Um, it's certainly not low acidity, but it's got, a, it's got enough freshness that this is ripe fruit, but not overly ripe or dried fruit. Yeah. So I'd give it a medium. Fruit, um, the French Tanat is tends to be known for red fruits. So more raspberry plum. This one is known for being a little richer. It's a microclimate within uh, within the uh, within the area where they tend to get a little bit richer quality on there. And they talk about a little darker fruit. I think that's showing up. I agree with that. Um, I was curious. Like darker, like blackberry? Blackberry, yeah. I go blackberry, but raspberry too, because mm -hmm. you're getting that nice fresh side too. Uh, black cherry. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even go red cherry on this. I'd go black cherry on this guy. Cherry. I'm getting black cherry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a little darker than mm -hmm. I than I expected. And I, I like that a lot. It, one of the things, the reasons this gets such good ratings is it has that nice balance of a little bit more intense fruitiness with that big tannin, yeah. which to me makes it even more. I mean, an American steak loving red wine, big red wine drinker. I don't know, and, you know, and this is just getting into this wine. 
I think this would please many a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon drinker, which oh, is one sure. of the things I love about Tanakh. Yeah. It's like, it's the new cab, baby, you know? <laughs> so when you're talking about, you know, this guy drinks, uh, I mean, if I were getting this out of a Napa Valley cab, it would, we'd be talking about a lot more expensive bottle of wine than we're mm. drinking tonight. Hmm. Smokiness, herbiness, definitely a nice herbiness going on in here, right? Hmm. Ten, ten, what I, what I, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. what, what I was saying to Robin this whole time, I, I poured mine 15 minutes before I poured hers or so. And I've been telling her this whole time, like for me, it's smokiness, like dried herbs. Um, yeah. um, there's like a slight floral component. It's not a floral wine, but it's more of like, it's like a subtle, like, again, kind of dried and stuff like that really coming out. Um, and I took a sip of hers and I was like, oh, this is a little bit more of that maybe dark fruit or maybe slight dark chocolate or something else like that. But I was like, mine 100% has been smoky and herbal. Mm -hmm. I think this like whole time. Hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great As call. It opens. And, yeah, and honestly, mm -hmm. like in first blush, I talked about a little bit of chocolate, which mm -hmm. to me has gone away and just become more of this, this nice dried herbal blend mm -hmm. you know on there so and then i agree there is a floral component so the cab franc is expressing itself through there and that's where the floral would come from and likely if you get any pepperiness on this guy that's probably coming from the cab franc as well which i could definitely go when you're going with those dried herbs i can go in there with some peppercorns like pink and pink and black peppercorn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that's going to be that cab franc kind of coming through in there Mm. I think it's delicious. Yeah, I, um, I'm happy. I'm so happy. And you know, I love it because I'm like, okay, I'm in front of everybody. I had you buy it. I hope it's good. No, I really felt like it. No, was it's great. I just really wish I had a steak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I aerated the first glass of this for 40, us. Forty-five minutes ago. Yeah, we opened ours a while ago. About forty-five minutes. Yeah. So I aerated it, and I honestly, I said to Jerry, I was like, hmm, I get strawberry and raspberry in here. But mm -hmm. I got her a little herb, but I'll say this much, the glass I just poured, I didn't aerate. I like it much better, but I, I, I agree with you, Chris, it got smokier and it got more herbaceous, but I get like rose hips. That's like the herb, like yeah, the herb yeah. Huh. Yeah, that I, I get like is that. rose hips. I think it's great. I said the same thing, yeah. Yeah, rose hips, good call. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. And then you can say this, the old world is showing up in this guy where as you let it open and as you begin drinking it, it's it's dry and you're talking about the secondary qualities, not just hung up on, oh, excuse me, only fruit. Yeah. That's Absolutely. more of a new world thing. Mm -hmm. And the tannins have really tamed down a little bit too over this period. Of time. Yeah. yeah, I agree. They start out pretty aggressive yeah. and they, um, they, relax. they are relaxing mm -hmm. nicely, which I think they needed to do to enjoy it fully. Um, I really like what this wine is evolving into. Yeah. I think this is this is a class act right here. Mm. Mm. Do you want me to share? Yes, please. Sorry, I was caught up in enjoying. <laughs> well, it's good. You should get to drink some too, right? <laughs> so. mm. All right. All right. That's not great. So, um, Tanats, uh, very thick-skinned grape. All right, uh, makes a deep purple wine, which, uh, yes, yeah, check. <laughs> um, strong tannins, um, four red grapes, a little higher in acidity, if you're not careful, if you don't, you know, work with it. Mm -hmm. um, let's uh, jump down here. Flavors, black plum, black licorice. I don't know if I'm getting as much black licorice or dark chocolate tonight. Um, I think it's a little different. I think more of the smoke. The cardamom, the yeah. herb, herbs, and yeah. then that little cab franc is definitely making its. I think the cab franc is probably playing with those same aspects that are more minor characters mm -hmm. in the Tanat and elevating them. And I, I love the winemaker's choice on that. Oh, yeah. I think it's delicious. And honestly, I could almost go for a little um, a cedar quality on this mm -hmm. guy tonight um, as it's working. And that, once again, reminds me of Napa Cab. Yeah which I think was a really cool call. Absolutely. You said this is drought resistant. 
does that mean it's heat resistant to? I'm just wondering about what's happening with, yes. with this summer. So um, one of the reasons to not was made, and I can't remember if I have it here. Anyway, it's easier to grow. Right? Yeah. So one of the great things about Tanat, Tanat was developed there in the um, in the mountains in the southwestern France, right as you're approaching Spain, mm -hmm. in the Basque area. Right. Okay. So one of the reasons the Uruguayans wanted Tanat to bring over from France, and they're like, why Tanat? Why not grab all the other ones that are already popular? Right. It's easier to grow. The thicker skin, it's a thicker skin grape. It makes it easier to grow. It's resistant to things from drought, temperature extremes. It can grow from cooler to warmer. You can play with it more. And it also, in case you have a little bit higher humidity, the thicker skins make the grapes uh, resistant to pests and mildews okay. and infection, right? So great. All right. So Tana is, can be easier to grow much. And it has the exact same story. And I know I've said this before, but it has a very, very similar story to Pinotage. So Pinotage down in South Africa yeah. was a grape developed to make Pinot Noir easier to grow, which it is, but not easier to grow tastily. <laughs> same thing with Tana. Poorly grown to not is wretched, all right? It's astringent, it's overly, okay. it's a combination of overly acidic and overly tannic. And you end up with this, almost like a combination of raspberries with aspirin, oh, right? It, it, that's, you're gonna get this nasty thing if you don't grow it well. And so it can be very rewarding for you, mm -hmm. but you have to know how to grow it and manage the grapes in such a way to get the best out of them because they will give you the worst if you're not careful. <laughs> They're not just gonna give it up easily. So um, anyway, but I think that's kind of one of the fun things about it. Um, um, one of the, oh, let's go ahead and head back. Okay. This is one of the most healthy grapes in the world oh. um, because it has so many antioxidants. Here we have, um, here's Tanat. So look at like Cab wow. and Merlot are way down here comparatively. And Cab and Merlot have a really good amount of antioxidants. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> you've got Tanat way up here right next to Sagrantino, which is from central Italy. We will drink one. I was gonna ask, I'm like, I don't think we've had one of those unless it has another name, which- <laughs> Oh, right. No, actually that is that is the name. Okay. Um, it's from um, Umbria in central Italy. We absolutely will drink one of those. Okay. I was, um, I would be, <laughs> once I was looking at this, I thought, okay, mm -hmm. the question will come up and they're delicious wines. Okay. No problem. I'm already working on my selection. We, awesome. we will drink one. So for all of you that are joining us tonight, though, you see, you can tell everyone how healthy you were this evening. That's right. Because of all the antioxidants. Hey, look, this, <laughs> this is not this is not drinking. This is supplementation. Exactly. And Harriet can uh, vouch for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, next that is Especially when you add chocolate. Add yeah. chocolate. Oh, look at exactly. that. Exactly. There you go. It's just, it's not... It's just so, so much, much more, more it's exponentially right? greater than right. the other two. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's 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 a crazy jump. They have mm -hmm. much thicker skins. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You ready for the next? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Um, never mind, I'm not. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean we could do it, but right. anyway. Um, Uruguay, so I like I mentioned, Uruguay has claimed this and now they list it as Uruguayan's national grape. So the Uruguayans have said, hey, you know what, France, you basically gave up on Tanat. This is a very small area mm -hmm. of France. It's like 44,000 hectares left, maybe. I don't know what that means. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's very small, okay. All right, comparatively. Okay. And, um, and the Uruguayans, by the way, so Tanat has only been in the top 100 wines of the year list one time. Well, excuse me, the first time. It's been every year since then. Oh, okay, okay. But the first time it ever was in the top 100 wines list, uh, you know, wine enthusiast and mm -hmm. wine spectator, was in 2017. And oh, that wow. was the Uruguayan. Okay. So it wasn't until 2017. Mm -hmm. And it was the Uruguayan that made it to the Garzon single vineyard mm -hmm. that we drank together. Right, right, like, right. Like, what, eight, nine months ago? Mm -hmm. That's the one that was the first one to ever crack the top 100 wow. with a Tanat. Um, I'd say this guy is every bit as good as that. Mm -hmm. I, I think the thing is they just don't make much. Sure. And that is a thing. Yeah. 
Actually, we'll talk about another nation that makes evidently some really good wine. We'll do it after the so we mm-hmm. don't interrupt the, the flow of this. Um, that uh, is really close to the U.S. and brings almost no wine in. But oh. uh, all right, uh, let's see. Antioxidants uh, again. Cover that. So small production. Let's move on. All right, I okay. covered it. All right, so here we have the anatomy of a grape. So in this case, what we're talking about is an extremely thick skin and an intense um, zone in here with all of the, um, the all of those zone. flavors. Yes, uh, but with a nice balance of strong acidity in the core. So this is a very, to me, I love this grape. You, you guys grape. know I'm a fan, yeah. but you love to not. I love to not. Yeah. Um, but I love that it's got that balance where it's got this big, thick skin and it doesn't leave it as just like a fruit, you know, like a, maybe a sweet and tannic balm. Mm-hmm. It's got balance all the way through. This is, oh, great, great. Like it, it's, know, it's fantastic. I think it's, I think it's pretty awesome. Wonderful balance and intensity. So you said it's it's humidity resistant, heat resistant. Drought. We'll just start growing some in the back. You know what? If if something had a chance in Florida, I'd give it to not the chance. So you know now you know now you've challenged challenge yeah. accepted. We're no, growing to no, not no, in the no, backyard. No, we, it's enough with the brewing. We don't need the winery mm. too. We're good. <laughs> Fine, not in the backyard. I grow it at the brewery. Okay. All right. So. Uh, let's look to see where it's grown. All right, so here we are in France, southwest France, near right Spain. there near mm-hmm. Spain. So right about the dead center of the growing latitudes. Sure. It's in the, um, we're down here. It's in the hill. This is the, uh, the foothills of the Pyrenees. Okay. So uh, let's see, I think it's listed here, but it's okay. We're going to have a better shot in a moment. I just want to look at all of the wine growing regions. You know, that we've been drinking through. You know, we've hit the Rhone, Loire Valley, Bordeaux, this is Burgundy, this is Champagne. So, yeah. I feel really good about it. Yeah. Pro- Provence. We've hit a lot of France. Uh, yeah, we have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Languedoc, we were drinking mm-hmm. down here. So, anyway, we're down here in Southwest, which has got some great things. All right. So, there it goes. Just, just, show, <laughs> just boop, that, that one little area. <laughs> so wait, can you go back a moment? Mm-hmm. So these are their wine wine regions. Is that... Do you want me to go one up? No, okay. no, this one. This may be a stupid question. But um, so the lines that I'm seeing, mm-hmm. are they like counties? Oh yeah, like this, these are not or states. This this is not done by wine region. You're right. This is their this is their um, their geopolitical region. Oh okay, so, yeah. all right. But I just wanted. I thought it was really good to show the size and the location mm-hmm. of this to kind of take away the busyness of the previous sure, one. Sure, sure. It's like there it is, boop, right there. That that's it. By the way, it's not. So used wait, to wait. Be. That's the only place in the entire country that grows to not. For the most part. Okay. There's a little bit grown in the Loire because okay. they blend it with the Cab Franc. So we're drinking Tanat blended with Cab Franc. Mm-hmm. Cab Franc growers up in the Loire Valley mm-hmm. blend in a little Tanat sometimes. Okay. So it goes back and forth. But there's very little. It used to be in the Bordeaux. So Bordeaux blends used to include Tanat, but it fell out of favor. Probably because it's a little temperamental. Oh, sure. So here we are, uh, Mataron is right here. So so you get a little smattering of it around these areas, but mm-hmm. this is who was known for it. Okay. Right. And then look, Spain's right here. Mm, yeah. So. All right, so uh, Mataron, Flan- France, let's talk about the first, Southwest France, the last stronghold of Tanat in France for the most part, um, in the foothills of the Pyrenees. Strong connection to the Basque people historically. Mm-hmm. So that was, um, this is, that's why it's a little bit of, you know, the French, it's kind of a little more wild, you know, well, it's a Basque little harder to deal little, with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that kind of, that kind of wildness that you get with, um, well, anyone that we were just drinking a, a Basque uh, influenced white wine from the other side of the mountains on Sunday at the store. Oh. Yeah. Um, so it's always they're always kind of unique and different mm-hmm. and a little more 
throwback to okay. these great older grapes. Mm -hmm. And I, I just love them. I love the, you know, what you can get out of it. So, all right. So here we have the, uh, the monastery itself. I, I, yeah. I was like, that's, that's a monastery. It is. <laughs> I mean, you look at it and you can just tell. Right. So the, um, the monastery was what originally, you know, the monks originally were the winemakers in this mm -hmm. area. And this monastery was actually is now a resort and a restaurant. We, we can go stay there. We can stay there. Awesome. They, they very much would love for us to stay there. Um, well, maybe. <laughs> Just so, because it's the French hosting Americans, maybe not. <laughs> no, no, I, I think it'd be okay. <laughs> We're not ugly Americans. You're very attractive. You're oh, attractive enough for both of us. So, um, so. Monastère de Saint-Mont is the inspiration for this region, mm -hmm. and it's kind of the hub. The Plémont in the name is actually a collective of growers, winemakers, chateaus, and estates in the Madaron area. Okay. So they all work together. That's amazing that that works. Right, it started in the 1970s, in the 70s, and they've been doing it ever since then, so and they haven't gotten angry years. at each other, right? That's amazing, uh, what do we have? I mean... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? I noticed that too. And I was like, okay, yep. so it can't be a monastery anymore because there's a pool. Hey, look, most can swim. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's now a, a resort and restaurant. We'll see a lot more of, of this because I found this area fascinating. But the Playmont Collective started in the 70s. At first they were independent and then they all realized, you know what, we should all just do this together. And it's fair trade for all participants. They're really supportive of each other and um, they work together to bring in. So the Monastera de Saint-Mont is actually a subgroup, mm -hmm. not just part of Madaron. Madaron, you can have Madaron, Tanat, and then we have this one, which is just from this region here, okay. made by three specific winemakers and wine growers, which we'll see in just a few minutes. Okay. So here's another um, picture of the monastery and here are the vineyards, they're right there. Wow. I mean, it's not just a namesake, mm -hmm. they're right right there. Um, there's another shot I thought was gorgeous. And I love that it really is, you know, it is this place, even though this, it's been very modernized and updated, the history is there. Here's a tour going on, which we should all be on, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, here's the inside where you can buy things, all the wonderful whiny things. Um, here's the restaurant down in the caves. That's awesome. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when are we going? Right, exactly. Yeah. And so uh, these two gentlemen, and this wonderful uh, lady, Madame, uh, are who is responsible for what we're drinking tonight. So, so um, can I see? Yeah, you want me to minimize that? There we go. So basically what we would say, Oliver, um, mm -hmm. their family, which goes down in there, their family has been making wine in this region for 300 years. Wow. Their family crest goes back to 1771. It has it on the thing here. So, uh, and then Sebastian and Soizic, which is a fascinating name. Anyway, yeah. these are the three wonderful people that brought us these, this wine specifically because they're within that collective group, which I'm going to tell you, it was fascinating <laughs> getting ready for this today because the Playmont website mm -hmm. is, has wonderful information. If you want it in French, oh, if you want to see it in English mm -hmm. and you click English on their thing, mm -hmm. it breaks the whole website. Oh. Okay. But I was able to trick it. Like I said, I wanted it in French and then I told Google to translate okay. it. Okay, well, that was And it, it really helped out. That's right. So your background didn't help you at all, your hair. I, I tell you, I was surprised at how much I could read. Really? Yes. Oh, good for well, you. Well, because I speak Spanish. Well, <laughs> kind they're, of. They're both romance languages. Kind of speak Spanish. A little yes. bit, a little bit. Enough, how about enough? A little bit, yeah. Hmm. So mm -hmm. I love that they all have berets. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Although his kind of looks like a golf cap in the middle, but I'm assuming it's a kind of like it looks well. kind of like a driver's cap. Yeah, from the English, true. but I'm sure it's a beret. 
I don't want to make anyone upset. So, right. um, but I, I'm just amazed that this works as a collective. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's awesome. And she's so young, 31 one years one to be able to do that. That's, wow. Right? Right. Yeah. And she doesn't even know, uh, like her, her background was like, she came in and just fell in love with doing it. And so, she just has a talent for it, yep, obviously. Evidently. Yeah. Yep. Let's go ahead and move on. All right. So like we saw, this guy is grabbing... 92 points um, from Wine Enthusiast. From Wine Enthusiast, super small production. I was shocked that I was able to find anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I really thought we were gonna be on our own and had we been, I would have been fine with it because I really wanted to drink this wine. I will, you know, I will leave it to you guys to discuss a little bit now. Okay, so let's talk about with these, uh, you know, with the scores over there, with 90 to 94 being an outstanding wine of superior character, 85 to 89, a very good wine with special qualities. 80 to 84, a good solid wine, or 95 even to 100, a classic. Oh my God. I'm going to buy a case of this and save it for my daughter's wedding. What are you guys thinking? Yep, go ahead and put your score in the chat box. Or thinking, if you want to put a G on the end, go for it. <laughs> It depends how Yankee Town you're feeling. So I'm going to tell not. you for a minute. <laughs> 92, 95 from Rachel mm. and Dave. Wow. 90, 91, much better with dinner. Mm -hmm. Brian, 90, Julie, 89, Stephen, 88. Okay. Okay. Wow, this is a big range tonight. That is a big range. Mm hmm. I could buy a case of his for my daughter's wedding. Oh, there you go. Oh, there. Yep. Nice. And I think it was this. This, right. This reminder. We both find it hard to rate, really like a good old world wine, but hard to quantify. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, Chris and Robin, because I'm not, like, the only other Tanat I've had was the Uruguayan Tanat that we had, mm -hmm. like, eight months ago. So um, I, I find it hard to rate, too, because I I don't know as much, like, what I'm comparing it to. Mm -hmm. I really like it, but I don't know, like, I'm... Like I know that it has a standard. So mm -hmm. I really like it. So I would do like a 91 mm -hmm. because I like it. Right. So, um, and then let's see. This is where that like the, the different grading scale of what we're used to in school versus like the wine pairing is, makes it harder to do. Cause like an 89 feels bad cause everyone's scoring it in the nineties. Like I really like it, but in comparison to like the bolder flavors of some of the other wines we've had, that's how, like all I can compare it to. So to me, like the, I love, like it's big, like all the tannins are big and I like that, but I don't feel like, like, like you said, like I can't taste, I'm not, I said, you guys were really, uh, naming dark fruits earlier and like plum was the only one I could really like say, like I taste plum and I didn't hear anybody else say it. So I was like, maybe I'm just way off on this one that I couldn't like grasp a flavor on it. I really like it. And so I was like, okay, 89, is very good like it's very like yeah, a special quality yeah. and then it's like it's so hard you gave us two good of wines in previous weeks now we you know now <laughs> our, our scores are lower you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah i i i tasted like a i think we did say a dark plum but maybe not i thought so but if we didn't we right, meant to but um, yeah yeah i think so when i looked at it, least of the slides but i agree plum, but um, definitely red plum on this guy mm -hmm. but i think black cherry as well still yeah. And in dark, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So then we've got Jerry's in 92, 93, mm -hmm. and then either Chris or Robin reminds me of a Cab Franc a lot. Mm -hmm. I like it, so I think I'll settle around very good 90 inch, yeah. 90 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I which which puts you up in that outstanding category. I say mm -hmm. easily when you average up these guys, we're talking about a 91, 92 point for the one. average, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I would call it a 92, 93. Okay, I think it's an outstanding. Do you also beautiful know wine. what your tasting for well you, you know i mean one would hope well <laughs> but um this is this is a beautiful wine yeah. i love the dryness i really wanted to drink it with food mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and um as you guys know that's always our, our issue oh, wow. just that 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 balance on the nose as i'm you know bringing it in where i'm getting a combination of so it's like all right black cherry yes but i'm getting a combination of earth smoke and mm -hmm. herbs all balanced mm -hmm. all at the same yeah. time that balance reminds me of a bordeaux sure and 
I just think that's it's just very well made wine. That old world, not too much oak coming through. So. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you notice, no one's mentioned vanilla. Oh yeah, no. Right, so they tamed it down, and yet we're not talking about turning it into vanilla. Right. Um, not that there's anything wrong with vanilla. I mean, when we were when we were drinking a um, a beautiful Napa red blend like Tre Leone, we're going to get vanilla. That's that's the style, mm -hmm. right? But I do really enjoy kind of the old world side of things as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, anyway. No, I like the be... balance of the different things. I agree with you, Julie. Plum was one of the only fruits I thought of. Didn't get a ton of fruit, just some. Yeah, well, I agree. Yeah, yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't super fruity for me either because right. I did get the smokiness and the herbs, well, and that, which I really liked that's, that. Uh, that's old world. Mm -hmm. That old world is, is that whole balance where the, not only do you have a balance of non-fruit, you mm -hmm. have a balance with the fruit. Yeah. Where what I like to see with old world wines is where I'm trying to decide which one do I mention first? Sure. Do I mention the fruit or the herbs first? Because they're both competing for my attention. Right. That's a wonderful balance that I love. So I find that like the more we taste through things, the more I appreciate that old world side where mm -hmm. I used to just hate it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I felt like I'm just like licking the ground or something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, well, I used to really just really not like that. But yeah, no, as, as we drink through more, I find that I'm looking for that more and more. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in more and more, old world is meant for food. Like, okay. Old world is meant for food. Like yeah. Put whatever tune you put it, you want in there. <laughs> That is the thing. We'll tell you which tune he was doing after the <laughs> the recording. Oh, you was got over. that? Did you? Oh, yeah. I know what I know what it's from. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we, it was a show we saw with Julie. Actually, was Julie there? Yeah. Julie well, of course, was Julie us. was there. She's everywhere. Yes. yes. Right. Who would do anything without Julie? Right there, you go. Okay. Next one. Let's go to the next one. Okay. I believe. We're... All right. So, thank you, Wine Folly. Um, thank you for uh, playmont.com, even though it was very broken in English. Thank you, Wikipedia. Thank you, Decanter. Only one of those was wrong. So that's nope. left over from last week. <laughs> <laughs> wine and Soul was the winery last week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to ask Julie if she enjoyed her Wine and Soul after we're done recording. Oh, right. Because she missed the she, tasting. She Look right. at her. She's out. Oh, I, I think I, I, I see a positive response. All okay. right. So next week's wine. I'm, I know three people here are going to be super excited about this. That would be Brian and the Hogsets. Yep. Which kind of sounds like a 70s uh, kids does. show, right? It's or a band. I mean, Brian, Brian and the Hogsets. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're going to Mosul, Germany. And, I, you know, oh, almost a year ago, I promised you guys a dry Riesling, and they were out of stock. It was COVID. We couldn't get it. Um, so I took it up a notch from the one I was I was okay. aiming at before. This is a big guy. I mean, look at these these ratings or something. So um, this, a, this is a trocken. So trocken means dry riesling. The trocken style means dry. Okay. Um, so it's complex and beautiful. It's great for summer. Um, I know when we drank the, well, past, the but not past really past sweet oh, riesling past last past year. Past. So Everyone, including you, who thought they were not going to like it, um, said that they really would needed to drink it for the summer, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you follow through? Did you drink wrestling? Did you put it in front of me? <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. Anyway, <laughs> this is going to be great. It's a fantastic, it's going to be wonderful for summer. It's going to be wonderful because it's delicious. And we're going to drink a dry wrestling next week. And okay. I hope you guys will all join us. I really think you're going to love it. Um, Fritz is making some great wines. Fritz Hog. And I'm going to ask Jerry and Harriet if they have met him after we're done recording, because there is a chance. Well, so. or you can save it for next week, because we're doing the right. tasting. Well, if, if if they give me a good answer, then I'll put it in. Oh, okay. The thing next All right. Week, right? Okay. All right. In the meantime, let's have a toe. Let's jump back. Have your last thoughts. And then we can toast out this, I think, beautiful wine overall. I did I didn't get any 82s or 80s on this, so I'm pretty sure everyone agrees. Yeah. It's it was worth drinking. Um, any last thoughts? Hey, look okay. at that. Barkin said, yep. 
Teacher intimidates the class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We're, we'll start the after party after we start stop recording. Thank Cheers. You, thank you, France. This is, I think, a beautiful yeah, tonight. Yeah, it's fantastic.